everyone. My name is Vikas Bhatia, and I'm the head of product for Azure Confidential Computing. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here. Today, we're going to be talking about how we are broadening confidential computing support inside Azure. So for the agenda, I will cover at a basic level what confidential computing actually is. If you are familiar with confidential computing already, this will be a nice refresher course. Then you might be wondering, what do I use it for? So I'll talk through a few use cases of what we are seeing from customers as they leverage this game-changing technology that we are bringing to the industry. Let me talk about how we think about confidential computing at Azure. At Azure, we think about confidential computing as being more than a virtual machine here or a virtual machine there. We think about it as something that is completely end-to-end -end across the stack to kind of ensure that you can meet the security and privacy bar for your workloads. And to end, we'll end with a demo that shows how you can put all these Lego pieces together to have a cohesive solution for something like an HR app. So let's get started. So first, let's cover what is confidential computing. So when we talk about confidential computing, we first need to talk about what is the data protection lifecycle. So when we think about data protection, we think about it as three legs of a stool. And the first two legs of the stool are on the screen right now. So as an industry, we have solved protecting data at rest and protecting data in transit. So today, if somebody goes to your rack in the cloud and takes out the hard drive and walks away with it, there's nothing they can do. Because as an industry, we have made it, we've normalized encrypting data at rest. Similarly, data in transit, data moving between devices. Just 10 years back, we were still sending HTTP traffic, but now HTTPS and TLS are something that we use for all of our applications. But when data is actually being used, when your data is actually being computed on in the cloud, in your virtual machine, or in your container, or in your application, your application reads the data in the clear because it needs it in the clear so it can compute on it. But that data is in the clear which exposes it to a bunch of vulnerabilities and attacks which confidential computing can help you protect. So what confidential computing helps you do, it helps you protect that data in use. So now you can protect your data while it is in use, while it is in memory, while it is in RAM to make sure that your data protection lifecycle is now covered across all three legs of the stool. So you now protect your data in Azure when it is at rest, in transit, and with confidential computing when it is in use. So when we talk about confidential computing, our vision is to transform the Azure cloud as you know it today to the Azure confidential cloud. And we want to enable the industry to move from computing in the clear to computing confidentially. And this is something that we are doing with the industry. We are one of the founding members of the Confidential Computing Consortium. We have been working with a bunch of customers and partners and hardware vendors to bring confidential computing and accelerate the adoption of confidential computing for our most private and security sensitive workloads. So as I had mentioned before, I think we need to kind of step back and look at all the use cases that confidential computing is relevant for. So what we are seeing is confidential computing is very relevant to regulated industries. So we are seeing a bunch of use cases arising from industries such as government, financial services, healthcare, insurance, energy, manufacturing, all of these industries that are dealing with very sensitive data are requiring confidential computing because they want to make sure that their data is protected throughout. So for instance, in the government sector, we are seeing confidential computing being leveraged for scenarios such as anti-corruption, anti-terrorism, uh, critical infrastructure protection. This is something that we are seeing a lot of because you want to make sure that your, your workloads are protected uh, as they are being deployed. And for financial services, we are seeing scenarios around anti-money laundering fraud protection, fraud benchmarking across multiple data sources. And in healthcare, we've seen a bunch of use cases around uh, new drug development, disease diagnostics, 
uh, contact tracing when it comes to COVID-19 uh, solutions. And we are seeing a whole bunch of use cases on insurance fraud detection, right? And as we've been thinking of, and we've been looking at these use cases, we are seeing a bunch of customers that we've been working through. So these are some of the public announcements that we've made with customers. As you can see, there's a set of customers across varying industries, across financial and healthcare and retail and also social media. So RBC is one of the customers that we've been working with for a while. Slumber J is leveraging confidential computing for a bunch of use cases that allows them to share data confidentially. Signal Messenger uses confidential computing to make sure that they themselves as being the operator of the service do not have access to the user's device graph, right? So this is a very, very powerful concept where the service provider, Signal in this case, is making an assurance to its users that they themselves are not gonna be able to see their contact graphs, their chats, their pictures. So confidential computing allows you to enable all of these use cases that were previously hard to do, or in some cases even impossible. One of the use cases that we've talked about recently publicly is our engagement with RBC, Royal Bank of Canada. RBC is one of the biggest banks in Canada, and we've been working with them for the last couple of years to really further the thinking that has put confidential computing to the stage that it's at. Now, RBC does not have access to data of what their customers use, right? So if they want to provide an offer to their customer to, to, to potentially use their credit card to buy something of value, today, RBC only has access to its own data. But in order to provide a more targeted offer, RBC might benefit to merge its data set with, say, a merchant's data set to provide a more targeted offer to a customer who might be going on an international trip and they may want to have you know, discounts for some purchases that they're going to make. But today, because of regulations and compliance, RBC and the merchant cannot merge their data because RBC cannot let its private PII data be visible to the merchant. And similarly, the merchant cannot have its data be visible to RBC. So what RBC has leveraged confidential computing for is a confidential multi-party data sharing scenario where RBC and other merchants can pool their data in a common protected confidential enclave where the only entity that has access to the combined data set is the code with the key to operate on that combined data set. This way, the data doesn't get leaked from one party to, the un to another. The key that is being used to operate on the combined data set is based out of our Manage HSM service for Azure Key Vault. It leverages Microsoft Azure Attestation, leverages SQL Always Encrypted, our Mysticos LibOS, and a bunch of capabilities that we have put together that allows RBC to enable this confidential multi-party data scenario Something that was possible before, but extremely hard to do. Leveraging confidential computing, RBC can now enable a scenario that allows them to scale horizontally to the needs of their customers. So now let's switch gears to talk about how we think about confidential computing at Azure. So as I mentioned earlier, we think about confidential computing as being more than a virtual machine. We think about confidential computing as something that is entire end-to-end -end on the stack. So as I mentioned earlier, we have been working with the industry, with the Confidential Computing Consortium. We have been working, we have a whole bunch of Microsoft researchers who are well-renowned in the industry working with the industry to further the adoption of confidential computing. We are also working with our hardware partners in AMD, Intel, and Arm Trust Zone to bring those confidential computing capabilities right at the silicon level. <clears throat> And we work with these hardware vendors to create the virtual machines that you can end up using, such as today we have generally available our Intel SGX-based DCS v2 virtual machines. We recently announced a private preview of our AMD SEV SNP-based EAC DAC-based virtual machines, which are based out of our, that are built on our general purpose hardware. We've talked about trusted launch virtual machines, which are in public preview. And also 
our IoT edge-based capabilities. Moving higher up on the stack, we also are making our services confidential. So we made SQL always encrypted confidential. We've allowed the ability to have your containers be schedulable through Azure Kubernetes service onto these confidential worker nodes. And when we move higher up on the stack, we are working openly in the industry with our Open Enclave SDK on Mystico's LibOS, where we have open sourced many of the products that we have put together so that you can now have a stack where you can now build your confidential computing journey where you can have control over every single line of code or an easy button offering where you can just point and click and move your existing workloads to be confidential. So as we've been working with customers, we are seeing our customers fall on a spectrum. There are customers who want to have the most secure and most control over their workloads. So these customers have very, very private and security sensitive workloads, and they want to make sure they have control over every line of code that's running inside a confidential enclave. They can create custom apps, but here they want control. So they're willing to spend the additional effort to create bespoke applications that solve a targeted problem inside a confidential computing enclave. For that, we have the enclave uh, capabilities with Intel SGX, so you can run your app code inside this enclave. Moving a little bit left to the balanced segment. These are the customers who are like, I will do a little bit of work for confidential computing, but not a lot. So what we are seeing is confidential containers as being something that is very relevant to this uh, customer base. So what confidential containers on Intel SGX lets you do, it lets you take your existing container, your Docker container, your standard Docker container, whether that's in Python, Java, .NET, you can take your existing Docker container, wrap it with a libOS like offering that is available through open source or one of our ISV partners and have that schedulable through Azure Kubernetes service onto these enclaves. So you can now have your containers themselves be confidential. And then on the left side of the screen, here are the easy button customers. What they want is I have a line of business application. I don't want to make changes to it. That application has been running really well for the last five odd years. I don't want to make any changes to it. So what they want is confidential capabilities, almost like an easy button. So they want to be able to enable and leverage confidential computing in the public cloud with the checkbox button. So for them, what we've enabled are these confidential virtual machines that we recently announced in preview we are leveraging AMD's SEV SNP technology, which encrypts the entire virtual machine. So what you have the ability is you can take your workloads and deploy them onto the confidential virtual machines. Similarly, our trusted launch virtual machines give you the ability to have secure boot capabilities to protect, protect against rootkits and bootkits. And finally, our confidential services are something that go across the board. They are just like any PaaS service that you might use in Azure, and these services are now available for you to leverage from inside your applications as you would do a normal service. So let's switch gears and talk about specifically what the landscape looks like for virtual machines and containers in, in Azure for confidentiality. So I like to call this our trust ladder, right? Who do you trust? So let's start right at the top. This is the most control uh, offering that I mentioned in the previous slide. So this one is hardware enclaves with Intel SGX enabled through our DCS v2 uh, virtual machines in Azure today. This is something that has been generally available uh, since April of 2020. Uh, with this offering, you can now have your workloads run confidentially where you do not have to trust either the virtual machine operating system, the virtual machine administrator. You do not have to trust the cloud provider, which is Azure in this case. So you don't need to trust our hypervisor, the host uh, operating system, or even the services that we run. And what this lets you do is have the tightest control that you, that you want on your workloads. And you can create bespoke applications to run on them or lift and shift your containers to run on these SGX enclaves. Moving down the ladder, ladder to the second rung are our hardware confidential virtual machines with AMD SEV SNP technology. 
So here, Microsoft cannot touch your workloads. So here, you're isolating the Azure CSP, the cloud service provider, outside your trust boundary, and all you're trusting is the virtual machine administrator who is you know, an employee in your organization, and you're trusting the virtual machine operating system, whether that's Windows or Linux, that you choose to run your applications on because you need a kernel for your applications to actually do system calls. So here, this is the simplest lift and shift offering available, which allows you to take your existing workload and just deploy them on a new virtual machine size. And the new uh, SEV SNP based virtual machines are built on the underlying general purpose hardware. So if you use EA or DA virtual machines, you can now use EAC or DAC virtual machines where C stands for confidentiality. So you now have a VM size that allows you to lift and shift your workloads to confidentiality. The bottom most rung of this ladder is the easiest button offering. So what this lets you do is it lets you isolate your workload so that only known trusted code is running on your virtual machine. So you're protected against rootkits and bootkits. Let me dive into each of these a little bit more. So the first one I'm gonna talk about is the hardware enclaves with Intel SGX. So what Intel SGX lets you do is it lets you take your code and data and, and run it. The only thing that you trust is your code and data and the CPU that it's running on. You do not need to trust the operating system, whether that's the guest operating system or the host operating system. You do not need to trust the hypervisor layer or the host layer. All you're doing is you're, you're running your code directly inside that blue box, that enclave, which has a lock in front of it. So you will have the key, and the key is something that you own. It's a customer managed key that can be based out of our Azure Key Vault managed HSM service. So there are two programming models that we are seeing here. The first programming model is where you take your existing application and you refactor it to run inside the enclave, or it's a brand new application that you use to create specifically bespoke application to leverage the capabilities inside this enclave. The second more common approach that we've seen from customers is where they wanna lift and shift their existing container apps to this enclave. And here you can get your existing containers and wrap it with one of the, the SGX wrappers and run it inside the enclave. And for that, you know, we have capabilities of open source where there are existing open source offerings such as Graphene or Occlum, which now allow you to take your existing code and run it inside the enclave wrapped with an SGX wrapper or leverage Mysticos, which is the libOS that Microsoft has also been working on in the open source environment. And you can also leverage our ISV. Uh, we have a rich ISV ecosystem with Anjuna, Fortanix, Scone, which can now let you also integrate with Azure Kubernetes service. So what does that look like? Confidential computing nodes on AKS or Azure Kubernetes service gives you that isolation and security where you're process isolated per container with an individual attestation. And you have no sort of restrictions on the number of containers per VM that you can run. And you are isolating the, the AKS node admin, the AKS admin and the cloud operator outside of the trust boundary. So if you look at the little red box in the diagram on the right, that little red box is protected from the guest operating system, the Kubernetes node, and the larger runtime that it operates under. And the, the capability here is that you can also treat your code as IP, right? Like your, your models are protected, your code is protected. You can also leverage a, uh, AKS capability to schedule your containers just as you would schedule any other container in Azure. As we build this ecosystem for our SGX application developers, we have a rich ecosystem of open source and ISV partners that you can integrate with. So you can see all these names on the cloud and you can also find them in the Azure marketplace, which gives you the flexibility to figure out your journey to kind of get you to be successful. So let's come back to the trust ladder. Next, we will talk about the middle part of this trust ladder, which is the hardware confidential virtual machines with AMD 7 SNP. Here, Microsoft cannot touch your workloads. So, as you see in this picture on the left, today, when you're running virtual machines in the cloud, you bring your workloads 
with your code and data to run inside these virtual machines. And Azure, just like any other CSP, is already super hardened to make sure that even if you're trusting all of these layers in this stack, whether that's the guest operating system, the hypervisor, and so on, today these are already pretty well hardened. But what hardware confidential VMs let you do is increase the amount, the, your security posture to a point where all you need to trust is your workloads, the code and data that you bring, and you're trusting the guest operating system that your code and data operate on, and you're trusting the AMD Sev SNP hardware, the CPU that's actually running your workload. This is great because you are now isolating Azure outside your trust boundary. What this lets you do is gives you the lift and shift capabilities for your existing applications. So you, all you need to do is redeploy to a new VM size. This is general purpose hardware and availability globally, and it's isolated from the cloud provider, which is Azure in this case. So now let's switch to the bottom part of this trust ladder, which is trusted launch VMs. So trusted launch is a feature on an existing virtual machine, as you can see on the screen. So you can now enable secure boot and VTPM capability. So what does that get you? Secure boot will protect you against attacks from malware from the tenant network and the operations team. It extends our secure boot capabilities down to your operating system. And this can now protect you against rootkits and bootkits. The VTPM capability is pretty powerful because this will now make sure that the operating system that you think you're running on is actually the operating system that you should be running on. Switching gears to confidential services at Microsoft. So to enable confidential computing, we have enabled a couple of infrastructure services that make your ramp to confidential computing a lot easier. The first one of those services is Microsoft Azure Attestation Service. Microsoft Azure Attestation Service is a service that allows you to attest that the code that you're running is actually the code that you should be running. It gives you the ability to measure and verify that nobody has changed your valuable IP without you knowing about it. And this is something that's a, it's a cloud scale service. It's free to developers. You do not need to trust Azure operationally here. And this is something that is inherently confidential because we've made the, we built this Azure attestation service ground up inside the SGX enclaves that I talked about in the previous slide. So even the fact that we put this attestation service out that you can leverage, this service itself is confidential inside Azure. Switching to the right, this is the Azure Key Vault Manage HSM service. So you must be familiar with Azure Key Vault, which is generally available to our developers in Azure. Azure Key Vault Manage HSM, which currently is in public preview, it allows you to, it gives you a fully managed service. It's highly available, zone resilient, single tenant HSM that you can use to shard out the keys to your individual workloads. It gives you secure key release abilities to make sure that the key that you're getting from AKB is actually secure, has not been compromised. And again, as we saw with Microsoft Azure Attestation Service, Azure Key Vault Managed HSM service is also inherently confidential because we've built it confidential from the ground up onto these SGX enclaves. And as we move towards the confidential cloud, we are enabling many of our services to become confidential. The first one is Azure SQL Always Encrypted with Secure Enclaves. Azure SQL is arguably one of the most complicated pieces of software. And what we've done is we've taken this piece of software that deals with really sensitive data, and we made that confidential. We've got confidential machine learning inferencing with our Onyx runtime, that is an SDK that's available in the open for you to leverage. Our Azure IoT with uh, enclaves is now generally av available, so you can not only have confidentiality in the cloud, but also in the edge when you're dealing with ARM trust zone based devices. And we have a new con Azure Confidential Ledger, which I'm excited to announce is public preview today, because this will now like, give you a tamper-proof audit logging capability to make sure that 
after the fact, you have the guarantee that nobody has touched your code or the data in a way that you were not expecting. There's a bunch of logging capabilities out there, ledger services out there. What differentiates this feature is, it, this service is it gives you logging which is tamper-proof. It's an append-only log with standard REST API capabilities that you can use in scenarios such as multi-party data sharing. Or we've seen use cases arise from many of our regulated customers who need logging, which is tamper-proof, for many of the regulations that they need to uh, comply with. So now let's wrap it up. Let's wrap it up with a demo that shows all of these exciting technology pieces together in one coherent application end-to-end. -end. So here's the current scenario. You have a traditional web application with a backend database deployed on-prem that are already in the crowd. In this case, let's use SQL. Your HR application, it's an HR application. It will deal with PII data. So it's got a bunch of PII data already in the database that is currently not encrypted. You have a managed service provider managing hosts and internal uh, database administrators or DBAs managing SQL as you normally would with any other database. You have low trust host admins and DBA admins who could potentially snoop into the data in case they are curious and you want to make sure you plug those holes. So what, this, what does this amount to? It amounts to a bunch of things. One, your DBA administrators are, are untrusted your domain administrators or your virtual machines administrators are untrusted. You need to meet additional audit requirements for your workloads as it deals with sensitive PII data. You want to make sure that the hypervisor and the data center that you're operating on is untrusted, that they don't have access to your data in case something happens. And of course, the sensitive PII data, the sensitive employee PII data that's stored in the database, you want to make sure that it is encrypted in the database when it's sitting at rest or even when it leaves the database to operate on compute when you're computing on it. So here's an end-to-end -end application demo that walks you through it. So let me play the video now. Hi, welcome to the demo. In the next five minutes, we're going to be walking through the diagram that you're seeing on the bottom left of my screen. So to get started, let's first check that our code is running on an authentic Azure Confidential VM. And as you can see from this property, it shows that the VM is running on AMD Cephas and PCHIP. And similarly, when we go to the Azure portal, we're actually able to see that the VM is running on a DC2 SKU as well. And for our Azure SQL database, we can see that it's running on a DC SKU machine as well. So going back into our diagram, essentially what we're going to be showing here is a sample HR web application that you can see on the top left of my screen. And it's running essentially on ASP.NET. And so one thing I do want to call out is that we basically lift and shifted this code from an existing repository. And we had to make no code level changes in order to have this application running on a confidential VM. And so what I'm basically doing in this uh, bit here from line 85 is I'm intercepting the query strings that are being passed in from the application. And the idea is we're basically going to be streaming this to Azure Confidential Ledger. And so to show you that, so essentially, you know, I'm basically playing the role of a curious HR admin. So the idea is I am a authenticated user in this application, uh, but as an organization, you might want to have end-to-end -end visibility not only with who has access to your application, but with regards to what kind of sensitive information they're pulling as well. And so what you can see here is in this application, I can, for example, go ahead and perform some filters. I might want to pass in the name of a certain person and do some query and some filtering on that as well. And so that brings us to this right-hand side. And what we're essentially doing here, as you can see, is we're getting the real-time log information that this web app is generating, and I'm basically streaming it into Azure Confidential Ledger. So let me just show you the code that I have here that basically does this, it's very simple. So first off, basically what we're doing is we're pulling some packages uh, from PyPy uh, for Azure Confidential Ledger, and we are essentially pointing it to the location of the logs. We're instantiating the identity services client, 
And at that point, what I'm doing is essentially getting a network identity object uh, that is pointed to my unique ledger ID. And I am writing the PEM certificate that is being generated on the fly, uh, just as a print statement here, as you can see. And from then on, I am basically authenticating to the confidential ledger using Azure Active Directory service principles, as you can see here, getting the credential object, getting the ledger client object. And at this point, I have everything I need to essentially interact with the ledger. So here on line 41, I basically have a very simple infinite loop. And essentially what it's doing is for each line in the log that is being generated, I am essentially appending each of those entries into the ledger. And the reason this is very important is because Azure Confidential Ledger, um, it is an append only log. So we cannot, for example, go ahead and make changes to any uh, pre-existing entry. Uh, essentially, it's using blockchain technology at the back end in order to enforce that condition. Um, but essentially, once the commit is performed and I have the transaction ID back uh, for the log entry, essentially what I'm doing here is I am getting that same entry back using the transaction ID and I'm printing it uh, as a print statement here. And essentially that completes uh, the loop that we looked at um, over here into our console app. So essentially we have written all of our sensitive logs and we've also got the ability to read that log back in a secured manner. So what is the next step? Essentially we have shown how a web application can be protected with Azure Confidential Ledger, but that doesn't show us how a database admin who might have full DB owner access to your database uh, might not be able to see your sensitive data. So for example, on the right here, what I'm doing is I'm logged into SSMS with the DB owner for this database. And what you can see here is even though I've got DB owner access, since I don't have access to the column master keys, which are being stored in Azure Key Vault MHSM, I cannot go ahead and decrypt those sensitive columns while at the same time, my web application can transparently get all of the information back in an unencrypted manner. And the reason is being able to do that is because of the SQL driver that it's using to abstract all of that away. And so one of the things that I can do as a database owner, as a, as a database admin, is essentially I can go ahead and initiate a extended event session. So let me go ahead and initiate a new one here. And what you'll see is that all the queries that get made as part of my database will get captured. So for example, if I go ahead and perform a couple queries and I pass in a predicate and I refresh this, what you'll see is that those three queries that I just made are getting captured. But the real cool part is basically this. Even though my database uh, query is being passed in with the predicate filters, as you can see here, that information is not available to me as a DB owner or a DBA. And so essentially this information is encrypted, um, but that doesn't take away from the ability of the web app to run rich confidential queries as you can see here. So for example, I'm doing a search pattern. Uh, we are going ahead and doing a filter. We had some range conditions that are being passed in. And so the web app can fully run in a secured manner within an Azure confidential VM without any changes to the code while your data as well as your sensitive logs are being protected thanks to Azure SQL, always encrypted with secure enclaves. So I hope you found this demo useful and uh, let me know if you have any questions. All of the code will be pasted on GitHub and until next time. So what you saw here, and when you compare it to the first diagram, you see the confidentiality box, right? You've made more of your workloads secured and confidential in, in a manner to, because now what you've done the malicious DBA or the curious virtual machine administrator does not have access to your workloads anymore. And what you're doing is you're leveraging a confidential virtual machine built on uh, AMD EPIC uh, 3 SEV SNP uh, hardware, which gives you a full lift and shift capability. It, you are leveraging uh, the manage HSM key vault to make sure that the key, your keys are protected and confidential. You're leveraging confidential ledger to make sure that you're meeting your audit requirements with a tamper-proof audit log. And you're leveraging Azure SQL always encrypted to make sure your data is always protected, even when it gets picked up on the compute side with the database driver.
So what, what do we have? We have a full lift and shift capability enabled through Azure Confidential Cloud Services. The current apps are now running on a confidential VM, which protects the data from data center administrators, the hypervisor, the SQL administrators. Your PII data is also protected through SQL as is encrypted, protecting that PII data from the database administrator. And the sensitive audit logs are flowing through the Azure Confidential Ledger, ensuring end-to-end -end confidentiality. So let's conclude this presentation. So let's talk about motivations. You as a customer want to make sure that you have full control over the data protection lifecycle. Your data needs to be protected at rest, in transit, and in use now with confidential computing. You want to prevent unauthorized access. You want to make sure you're complying with regulations and compliance. You've got to have auditable services. And you can do collaboration, but the collaboration itself is untrusted. And what Azure Confidential Computing can do, it can help you support your motivations to move to the cloud for your most private and security sensitive workloads. So here's the call to action. Start at https aka.ms slash Azure CC. This is our homepage on Azure. That'll give you all the links to navigate to the documentation, to customer case studies, the various solutions that we've put together. We have a couple of reference architectures there. We'll be adding more there. That's where you start the journey. If you're interested in many of the previews that I talked about today, the links are on the screen. Please let us know. We have limited capacity, and we'd love to work with you to help you figure out your journey to confidentiality. And of course, we'd love to hear from you. Get in touch with us through that email on the screen. Again, thank you so much for taking the time. It's my pleasure to walk you through this. I'd love to hear from you. Take care.